Grab an ombre jelly roll and some background fabric and let's get ready to piece this really great ombre quilt. Today we're going to be working on a jelly roll quilt, which is one of my favorite pre-cuts. They're nicely priced, they go on sale all the time, and they're just so adorable, these little roll-ups. So today I have used this V & Co Ombre Blooms for the quilt behind me, and it's a fairly new collection. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out. But it's adorable, it's got that great color variation of V & Co, and then added to it is these cute little blooms that show up that are kind of denser in the darker part of the fabric and less dense in the lighter part. So it turned out to be a really sweet quilt. I'm really happy with this one. The blocks come together really easily. It's very much like a log cabin construction if you're familiar with that. So you're just sewing rectangles together. The free PDF download for this pattern is in the description below. It's a free download on my website so be sure to check it out because it gives all of the cutting and instructions and some diagrams to help you assemble your quilt. The cutting instructions for these jelly roll strips is very simple. Because one jelly roll strip equals one block, all of the jelly roll strips will be cut exactly the same way. Now we are making 36 blocks for this quilt, which means we only need 36 jelly roll strips. So depending on how many came in your roll, you can grab a few and set them to the side. I left out some of the neutrals in my roll just because I was pretty sure I wanted to lay it out as a rainbow. Once you are done cutting your jelly roll strip rectangles, then there are cutting instructions for the background fabric in the pattern. Once you have all of your cutting complete, then it is time to assemble your blocks. So now that we have all of our strips cut and our background is ready to go, it's time to talk about the layout for these blocks. Now, if you are using a solid or a print, then the direction of these rectangles isn't really gonna matter. Like you can just lay them down however you kind of come to them. But because I'm using an ombre, I want to put the darkest bits here and the lightest bits here to create a little bit of depth in my block. And that's the only trick with using the ombre is just taking a moment to really think about where the lights and darks are gonna be. So I'm ready to sew this together. So let's sew a block. It's time to assemble our blocks. So you can see I have all of the pieces here for this block and it is a partial log cabin construction. This is our center, and then we'll be adding rectangles working out this way, and then these are our final two rectangles. I know that this looks like it's not gonna fit together. Once we take all the seam allowances out of here while we're sewing them all together, it will. <laughs> I have a diagram in the pattern that shows you the order in which you are gonna sew these blocks together, but with log cabins, you always start in the middle with the square. So I'm gonna grab my square, and you can see like this is the only piece that matches up to that square really. So we're just gonna fold it right sides together, and I'm gonna sew the seam with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, nothing fancy. So now I have this together, I'm gonna press it, and like I always do, I'm gonna press it open. Even though there aren't gonna be a lot of intersecting seams in this quilt, I just like to press open. So you could press away from the square and all of these seams, and it would probably turn out just fine, but I'm gonna press open, because I'm me. So I've pressed my first seam uh, between the square and the smallest light rectangle, and now it's just a matter of following that progression out. So now that these two pieces are together, this rectangle is now the right size, since we've taken out the seam allowance here. So now it's just a matter of right sides together, another seam, and press it open. And we're just gonna follow that pattern all the way out to the corner. So now that I have attached my first two small jelly roll rectangles as well as the outer background pieces, it's time to attach our final two jelly roll pieces. And it's the same thing that we have been doing. We are just flipping them right sides together and sewing those seams. And now it's time for the final jelly roll rectangle to be attached to the block. And then our block will be all finished. So now we have one complete block. 
So now we just need to repeat this process 35 more times. Now when I go to do those 35 other blocks, I will be chain piecing them, which means I will go through all of the steps that we just did, but I will do each one 35 times. So I will attach the center square to this first rectangle and I will chain all of those for all the blocks through my machine. And then I will cut them apart and then I will go through the second strip. And that just cuts down on the kind of transition time between your machine and your pressing board. And it just allows your workflow to go a little bit faster. So you guys know I make a lot of quilts and chain piecing is the key because the more things you can do without getting up and moving around, the just smoother everything is gonna go. The next time you see me, I will have a stack of these blocks and we will be ready to talk about layout. Lots of sewing and pressing later, but I have all 36 blocks done and ready to assemble into our top. So there are a few ways that you can arrange the blocks for this quilt. There is the one in the diagram on the pattern, or you could rotate them all so that the kind of dark border is kind of on the outside of the quilt. You can arrange all the blocks in rainbow order. You can mix them all up. You can really have a lot of fun with this. So whatever is most pleasing to you is what you should do. I'm going to pull down my design wall and try out a few options. And uh, I have a guess that I'm gonna go with rainbow, but I've also made a lot of rainbow quilts lately. So we'll see, we'll see. I'll try a few. So I can't fit the whole thing on my design wall because it is just kind of a drop down pull screen. If you haven't seen my video on my design wall, then I'll link it in the description below. It's actually a widescreen movie projector kind of pull down screen. And um, I just clamp batting to it when I need to use it. And it works great because I have no wall space in this room. Um, I was able to get the first two rows onto the design wall, but I still have 12 squares I couldn't fit up there to do kind of a row below here. Oh, I just lost one. <laughs> it's on the floor. I totally love it. I'm totally gonna go with this layout. Um, it's really cheerful and fun. I think I'm going to go ahead and just lay out these last two bottom rows just on the floor, and then it's time to sew it all together. I'm not gonna show the sewing of the rows. It's very easy. I have um, a couple of other videos where I show this process and I'll link one in the description below just in case you aren't familiar with how to sew it together. But basically, you're just gonna sew all the blocks together in this first row and then you'll sew all of these blocks together to form the second row and then you'll do this one long seam between the rows and just repeat that until you have a finished quilt top. But that is my next step. So when you next see me, I will have a completed rainbow ombre quilt top. So my quilt is all complete. It doesn't all fit in the frame here, but I will insert some pictures here of the whole quilt so you can see the full rainbow effect. I'm really happy with how this quilt came out. Obviously, I love a rainbow quilt, but I think the ombre kind of effect really adds a lot to the layout. And I love how the darker rectangles of the fabric come together to create kind of these darker elements in the center of the secondary motifs. And the lighter rectangles really come together to form like a really nice bright spot in the quilt. I had a lot of fun making this quilt. It was easy piecing. Obviously, I used an ombre jelly roll for my quilt, but this would look great in any print or in solids, or if you wanted to group light colored scraps together, you could put like green scraps into one block and then blue scraps into another block. They wouldn't have to be the same print as long as they were the same shade. You would still get this kind of rainbow effect. Once again, the link to the pattern is in the description below. It's a free PDF download it on my website and I will also link to the exact fabric that I use. I will be back next week with another video for you guys but if you would like a new video right now there are two videos popping up on the screen. One is another jelly roll quilt that I did a couple months ago and the other one is a video that YouTube thinks that you will love. So I hope you check them out and if you want to be current on all my videos be sure to subscribe. So have a lovely week and happy quilting! Oh this square oh my god! It's not going well tonight.